Do you ever feel like, oh, I have this good idea, this great plan, I, I have this goal, this dream, this desire, this, uh, this, um, thing that you would like to do, and then procrastination just creeps up and you don't do it. Well, that's how I was with this animation celebration. So I was going to watch Invincible Iron Man, the Marvel animated movie, but I got lazy, I procrastinated, and I didn't do it. But what I did do was I popped on the Max app and I watched Green Lantern, Beware My Power. And uh, after I roll that open, I'll break it down, my animation celebration, my review of Green Lantern, Beware My Power. But before I roll the open, I just have to let you know that this channel exists for one reason and one reason alone, and that's to let you know that I wrote a 68-page graphic novel called Everlasting Survivors, Volume 1 All Day Long. This is the Jeff Hicks A cover. This is the Nick Crook B cover. Um, if you follow the link in the description, you can get yourself one of five cover options. You can get hats and shirts and posters and uh, all kinds of good stuff. Anybody who makes a purchase gets a Gamble comic sticker. Like I said, stick around after the open. I'll break it down. Green Lantern, beware my power. Green Lantern, Beware My Power, came out in 2022 and runs for 1 hour 26 minutes. We open on a literal flashback. Jon Stewart is having a hard time adjusting to civilian life as much as, or so much so, that when a, a guy just touches him on the shoulder, Jon ends up pinning him up against a wall because he's, you know, uh, on edge about everything life really well executed sequence to show show us the audience john's state of mind only about a minute into this movie and john stewart sees an alley beatdown going on it's really crazy two bad guys are trying to burn a homeless man alive the uh, the attempted fire spot is followed up by a crazy two-on-one fist fight i like to think i'm um, you know, a good person, but it takes some real courage to, to, to fight two guys who just attempted to set another person on fire right in front of you. Things get extra nuts when the cops show up. John is so in command of this fight that they tase him and allow, unintentionally, the, the two bad guys to get away, the ones who started this whole thing. Thankfully, the cops don't arrest our hero, after they look him up and figure out that he's a decorated veteran. I enjoy how calm and composed John stays throughout this whole process, but I just have to ask myself, you know, how did the cops let the, the guys who started all this crap get away? But there's no time to get answers to any questions because just as soon as I think of a question, here comes another one. Because right as... John gets home from this crazy evening. An alien spaceship crashes near his house. The ship was piloted by one of the Guardians of the Universe. This Guardian already knows John Stewart's name, and when he runs up to the ship, um, John tries to help the pilot, but he turns to Ash. The ring itself says, Welcome to the Green Lantern Corps, John Stewart of Earth. <laughs> John doesn't want doesn't want this gift that's been given to him or, you know, this uh, this duty that's actually been thrust upon him and tries to, to remove the ring, but it won't allow him to do so. The Green Lantern ring takes what Jon Stewart says completely seriously, and it's pretty entertaining because Jon says to the ring to pound sand, and so the, the ring creates a, a green energy construct of a hammer that actually pounds the, 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 the ground, which is, you know, pretty nice and entertaining. 
John, being frustrated with the ring, asks for help in understanding what is going on. So the ring immediately begins taking him into space. John, knowing that he can't breathe in space, begins asking all kinds of questions, but the ring doesn't even realize that he's talking to it because John doesn't say ring first, and so the, the ring recommends that he say ring before he asks it questions. Once the ring is aware that John is speaking to it, the ring informs him he is being taken to the Justice League Watchtower. It's cool stuff, and it's a great way to justify the advancement of the story, which means that the, the ring itself has the knowledge of where Jon Stewart can understand what's going on with his stuff. And once we get to the Watchtower, we, we meet Green Arrow, Martian Manhunter, and Vixen. They are in a meeting, and the three acknowledge in, in conversation where the DC Justice League Trinity are, and also the Flash, as to let us, the audience, know why that they won't be appearing here for this Justice League meeting and also why they won't be teaming up with Green Lantern, Jon Stewart. So much has happened in just 10 minutes. The, the, the first 10 minutes of the movie really move at a breakneck pace. Uh, Martian Manhunter and Vixen are quick to go uh, for the attack thinking that Jon Stewart is an intruder, and the ring does its best to protect Jon, and once the League figure out that he is a lantern, they stop attacking. Oliver points his arrow at Jon when the ring announces its previous holder was Hal Jordan. This causes Oliver to not trust the ring or Jon because Oliver Queen refuses to believe that Hal Jordan is dead. Is Hal dead? I kind of doubt it because... You know, this is comic based, and and comic characters they uh, they're really not uh, not known for that staying dead st stuff. I mean, that's that's literally one of the the inspirations behind my own personal superhero team, Everlasting Survivors, and the shared commonality between the three primary heroes is that they have the ability to come back from fatal blows. Because I was like, well, I mean, heck, if, if it's going to be such a uh, reoccurring theme within the medium, then why not lean into it and make it part of the whole story itself? Oliver's disbelief in the death of Hal Jordan leads to John and uh, Oliver Queen going to the crash site of the spaceship, only to find that it is no longer in rough condition, but perfectly intact. Oliver brushes off the ship's repairs with an assumption of nanites. A bit lazy, but at least they said something to acknowledge how a vehicle can go from being in completely inoperable form to, you know, good to go in a very short amount of time, I guess. So many just conveniences. The ship self-repairing, the ring being able to communicate with the ship. But hey, I guess, you know, there's an argument to be made for the idea of the Green Lantern Ring in general, you know, anyway, being ultra, you know, convenient. So the ring taking the, the ship, or taking command of the ship, and just boom, off to the races on the way to Oa, I, I, you know, I guess it's fine, uh, if you will. I enjoy the animation of the ship and the trip itself. I, I find it beneficial because it gives Jon Stewart time to learn about the Guardians who made the rings, and the Green Lantern Corps. Nice little history lesson for any viewer who needed it. When John and Oliver arrive on Oa, I see this war zone that they have walked into, and I think John is about to have another flashback because this was very chaotic, and my assumption was right because here it comes, another flashback. After John's mind allows him to return to this reality that must feel fake to him he and oliver go in to what appears to be basically a green lantern's hall of heroes in said hall a recording plays for more information dump uh, to both inform john and the audience 
And John Stewart is told that Hal Jordan is known as the best Green Lantern in the universe. In the rubble, Green Arrow finds a lantern and you know gives it to John Stewart so that he can charge his his ring. I find it interesting the the choices that they've made to use within the context of this story because you know this is a new fresh universe. It started I don't know four films ago I guess and I believe with Superman Man of Tomorrow. And this new route that they're taking with this this new universe. I mean it's it's it takes a lot more liberties. It doesn't follow any particular like era of comics. It just picks and chooses pieces and parts of whatever uh, story they want to tell. It feels like at least. Whereas with the prior connected animated movie universe, it, it followed directly from the DC New 52. This one seems to be just taking whatever elements that the creative team desires and putting it together to uh, Frankenstein up this new world the way that they see fit, which is, it's interesting because it allows them to do a little more originality or attempt to be more surprising after Oliver Queen gives John Stewart the the lantern and says that he has to say the oath to charge the ring. John reminds Oliver that he came on this trip to figure out how to remove the ring and that the ironic and entertaining part is once John can take off the ring, which happens when Oliver Queen walks away from him basically to 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 explore another part of the place um somehow unexplained but again you know convenience of stuff uh john is able to remove the ring and once he does remove it he immediately gets attacked and chooses to put the ring right back on and the person who attacks john stewart is a thanagarian but not just any thanagarian but a future and commonly known Justice League member, Hawk Girl. With the ring back on, John is in command of the fight, and the ring is telling John lethal force, le- le- lethal force isn't authorized. Because wouldn't you just know it, John is having another flashback to his time in the war. And uh, Oliver returns from walking away and says, uh, <laughs> he's, he, he asks John, can't I leave you alone for a second? And w- once John comes to his senses and, and releases Hawk Girl, she accuses both heroes of the destruction that they all have seen here on Oa. Oliver explains that we just got here saying, I'm Green Arrow and this is John Stewart, which I, f- I, I literally laughed at. Because he could have easily have called John Stewart Green Air, uh, Lantern, like he called himself Green Arrow, but he just gives up his name like it's nothing. Which I guess technically it is nothing because we're not on Earth, and uh, you know what's Hot Girl gonna do with the name John Stewart? I, I guess nothing. But I still found it entertaining, and uh, and furthermore, she introduces herself to the two of them as Shaira Hall, not Hawk Girl. So at this point, Oliver Queen is the the standout by going by his his uh, his made up name Green Arrow instead of his given name Oliver Queen. More history lesson stuff this time, all about the Ran Thanagar War. In the story, we're being told um, how Jordan died attempting to help bring peace to the Ran and Thanagar or Ranian and Thanagarians. But I'm still very skeptical that Hal is even dead. Uh, I know, I know, you know, jaded and all that. But it just, it doesn't feel right. He's being brought up and and, and Oliver's skeptical, so it makes me skeptical. And, eh, you know, again, comic books. (laughs) Stuart and Queen invite Hawkgirl to join them on their fact-finding mission. She agrees, but is very defensive. And they're on the proverbial road again. It feels rare that the namesake hero is the audience stand-in, 
much like uh, because in in most things you'll have a character that is representative of the audience. I mean, it it goes as far back. Well, I mean, maybe even before this, but uh, when you think about uh, the old Super Friends show, the audience stand-in was the kids with their dog, not you know any of the Justice League members. But in this film, the audience stand-in, the person who needs to be informed of all the stuff, is the namesake hero or character. That being. Green Lantern, because he's new to this whole thing, and so every time information is being bestowed to the audience, in story, it's being given to him. So, I just thought that was an interesting choice. Feels like a little bit of copy-paste, because back on the road, back in the space, doing the, the whole thing, we land, and boom, here comes another fight. This time, enter Adam Strange. I didn't see it coming, but I probably should have given the fact that we were talking about the, Th the Ran thanagar War, and Adam Strange is the hero of Ran. Jon Stewart and Oliver Queen are a, a very good surprise team uh, trying to be bring peace to um, uh, between Hawkgirl and Adam Strange. Uh, both Oliver and the Ring seem to have both noticed that even though Jon started this journey to get rid of the ring itself, he has gotten quite proficient with using it. <laughs> Originally, I wrote that this Ran Thanagar war is ridiculous. However, upon thinking about it, I, I do believe that it is a good allegory for war in general, with both sides feeling as though they are right or in the right. And, you know, it's just makes good common sense. And, and I think that that's part of the, the justification for bringing Jon Stewart into this story and, and making him a part of uh, the Ran Thanagar war due to him coming from and still suffering from the effects of war. It keeps being brought up that there's a warmonger out there. So there's a, there's a, uh, within, within the context of the story. And th thus it makes me wonder is Mongol slash war world going to be added to this story? That seems like a bit much, but then I remembered that Mongol has previously been in the Sinestro core in the comic books. And then it hits me. I was like, Oh, the Sinestro core makes a much more logical villain for this story. Given, you know, Green Lantern being the title character. Once that thought crossed my mind about the Sinestro core, all the pieces fell into place. Even though I said that this new universe allows for the chance at a greater opportunity for surprise. Unfortunately for these folks who made this movie, I have way too many DC comics to be taken, uh, taken by surprise. And so I was right. The Sinestro Corps are the villains when Sinestro takes the three hero, or no, the four heroes prisoner, it's revealed that Hal is alive. Shock of all shocks, like I didn't see that coming. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. As they make their prison break, there is a fun little uh, continuity error where, so when they get locked up, Sinestro takes John's ring and he's out of costume when they break out of the prison. One scene he's back in, another scene he's back out of costume. Or uniform, I guess. Uh, but hey, you know, whatever. Nobody's perfect. I just would have thought somebody would have caught that. But, uh, yeah, so not only was Hal Jordan not dead, but when Jon Stewart inadvertently kills Sinestro by willing his ring back to himself, and it goes through Sinestro, in Sinestro's dying breath, he, he tells Jon to beware of his master. And that answers my the mystery of what's up with Hal Jordan. I immediately think Hal is Parallax, and I'm 1,000% sure of it, and uh, it's a beautiful reveal that I am correct, and uh, Hal as Parallax is seemingly overpowering even Hawkgirl, Adam Strange, Green Arrow, Jon Stewart, everybody, like this 4-on-1 tech, it seems like they're all at a disadvantage against Hal, but um, so Adam Strange makes the hero sacrifice to save Ran and Thanagar. Oliver unfortunately kills his friend Hal Jordan, and 
Jon Stewart shows his true strength of will throughout the film. It surprises me that the namesake character of Green Lantern doesn't or isn't the one to make the hard call or the one to make the sacrifice. It just feels a little off to me. But it's revealed when we get back to Earth that John's new mission, uh, now that he's gotten all of the Green Lantern rings that Hal Jordan had hoarded, is to reconstitute the Green Lantern Corps. And the film overall is fine. I give it a, a, a an acceptable 3 out of 5. Um, it, they, they, they tried good with, with the twist, but basically I saw them all coming. Uh, and again, I don't blame them. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of on me for, you know, having too many DC comics that I've read, I guess, or I don't know. But again, I, I, I don't dislike the movie. I just think that they've had so many stronger outings throughout multiple different routes of going with the DC animated movies, whether it is the prior connected universe or even the disconnected animated movies they were doing before. But I appreciate you tuning in to this animation celebration. Be sure to come back to the channel tomorrow for wrestling trivia and Thursday for comic trivia. And then uh, come back on Friday for the return of Comic Court. Thank you. Later.